Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Retro Lectors. And today we're looking at Dreamcast Arcade Fighters Volume 2. We're gonna start it off with Plasma Sword. Developed by Capcom, released 1998 in arcades and March 31st, 2000 on the Dreamcast and sold 50,000 units. Plasma Sword or Star Gladiator 2, as known in Japan, is a four button 3D fighter that is a sequel to the Star Gladiator that is released in 1998 in Japan. Plasma Sword adopts a three level gauge system where you're able to bank these gauges and use super moves or plasma strikes to defeat opponents. While in this field, you can avoid incoming attacks while the other player who summoned him has the advantage. Unlike Star Gladiator, the renamed sequel Plasma Sword adopts the endless 3D planes, which avoids disqualifications or rigouts. Plasma Sword contains 24 fighters, 10 of which are returning from Star Gladiator. It features alternate endings for each character and also features true endings for each character as well. Heavy Metal Geomatrix. Developed by Capcom and released in 2000 in arcades, and September 19, 2001 on the Dreamcast. Heavy Metal Geomatrix is a 3D arena fighter with up to four combatants on screen, similar to Power Stone, but a poor man's Power Stone. Originally released in arcades in 2001, it was then ported to the Dreamcast that same year. Geomatrix has 12 combatants, each of which are part of one of four factions. Fun fact, Heavy Metal Geomatrix features what Heavy Metal band in their soundtrack? Stay tuned to the end to find out. Heavy Metal Geomatrix's 3D environments are filled with weapon pickups and it feels more of a beat-em-up similar to Dynamite Cop than an actual fighter. Capcom vs SNK Developer Capcom, another one on this list, released August 2000 in North American arcades and November 9th and 2000 on the Dreamcast and sold 82,000 units. Capcom vs SNK utilizes a unique team building feature that requires you to create a team that has a power limit of a maximum of four. It's called the flexible ratio system. It allows you to build a team of up to four characters depending on the value of each character. For example, Ken and Ryu are both a level two. Therefore, with the both of them, you have amassed a team ranking of four. But you can also choose four level one characters and have four characters on your team as opposed to two. The possibilities are endless. Once your character is chosen, you can then place them in any order you see fit before each match. Each fight, there's a real-time fight analyzer at the bottom of the screen, which judges your skills based off of your offensive and defensive characters. Fun fact, you can also play this on the Neo Geo Pocket and unlock abilities in the Neo Geo Pocket and carry it over to the console. Virtuon, developer Sega AM3, released in 1998 in arcades and June 7th, 2000 on the Dreamcast and sold 57,000 units. Virtuon is a near perfect translation as stated by reviewers. They also stated that controls are a little bit difficult to get used to. While playing this game, the controls are legitimately hard to get used to. I found a little cheat by playing and made it a little bit easier for myself by constantly jumping. When you're jumping, you're able to auto focus on your enemy. The camera just swings to your enemy. So that's an easy way of actually doing it rather than trying to scroll, especially on the Dreamcast control. So I found that when you jump, you're automatically focused to your enemy and you can take your attacks that way, ranged or up close. In Japan, it's a specialized controller solely used for games that would utilize a dual stick setup. The one thing that a standard Dreamcast controller cannot do. The mission stick made games like Virtual on a lot easier to play. The graphics really stand out, especially while playing on a CRT television. I found while capturing footage for this game, I couldn't stop. I just kept on playing and playing and playing and actually beat the story mode. Not overly difficult. I found a few mid-game bosses a little bit tedious and a little bit cheap while playing against them. But once you get used to the controls and playing it repetitively, you find that it's not that bad. You just have to get used to the controls real fast. And last but not least, King of Fighters Evolution. Developed by SNK, released July 22nd, 1999 on the Neo Geo Arcade and May 10th, 2001 on the Dreamcast. King of Fighters Evolution is a unique 2D fighter that has you choosing a team of four characters, three of which are your main characters, and the fourth character is an assist character, or striker, that can only be summoned in to help deliver an extra few hits. King of Fighters Evolution also features the ability system that keeps score of your bouts. The more you play, you accumulate points to unlock more unplayable striker characters. It features nine game modes ranging from team play, single play, survival timed, survival endless, and more. It's a four button fighter that also utilizes a taunt button that boosts your super gauge. A specific feature that took me by surprise was I was breezing through the team play and ended up using a continue at the game's final boss and four options appeared. If you push the corresponding button to the continue, you have the ability to start the next round with either one third enemy health, full striker gauges, max power, or no changes at all. And like I said, I got to use a continue at the very end of the game. And when I 
got to the continue menu and I saw this option. I was like, what the heck is this? Well, reading it a little bit more, I, I decided obviously to choose your enemy to have one third health. And lo and behold, you start the round with one third health. I was actually really surprised by that feature because I had never seen that in any fighter. You just continue, you push start at the countdown and you start back or you can choose your characters all over again and start from there. But it doesn't do that. You push start, it gives you that option and you start using the same characters over and over again. So every time you continue, it's the same characters. You don't get a chance to change it. One thing I found weird too, I don't know if it was a glitch, but while I was playing, I had my set four characters and for some reason, one of the characters that was on the opposing team appeared on my team and I don't know why I never had that character on my team and I had my base three and I was going through the game with those base three and I had no issues with it but during the boss fight I noticed that I had another character that so I had to use that character to try to beat the boss I wasn't even familiar with which is kind of weird so I don't know if it was just something that I came across or something that actually happens on the norm I, I wasn't too sure what happened I kind of was dumbfounded as to why that happened. Maybe in the comments down below, you can let me know what happened, why that happened, because there was no justification on screen to tell me that I was able to pick up a character or whatever. So that was pretty weird in itself. And the answer to what heavy metal band that was featured in heavy metal Geomatrix, that's Megadeth. There was also a standalone CD soundtrack that was featured alongside with the game. It was released by Sanctuary Records back in 2001. And there you have it, five more arcade fighters that were on the Sega Dreamcast that were on arcades originally and made their way over to the Sega Dreamcast. Did you guys get a chance to play any of these either in arcades or on the Sega Dreamcast? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks guys.